everybody. How are you? I hope you're having a good Tuesday so far. I'm going to wait a little bit. I know it's straight up 11 o'clock, at least here in California. Hi, Lori Lee. Anna Christina, how are you? This is my first Instagram Live, so uh, if I get distracted by what's happening, I apologize ahead of time. Hey, thanks for the hearts and the loves. Appreciate it. Anna Christina, we need to connect. She's my nearby neighbor. We're in the same county, still a little closed down right now. So I'll give it another minute. Thanks for joining and taking the time. I know we're all super busy with what's going on with our studios and our teachers and our clients. So thanks very much. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about what it means to be a board member and how that process works for you when you're on the board, how to get involved and what kind of the inner workings of the board are. So my name is Katie Santos and I'm here on behalf of myself, the organization of the PMA and my fellow board members. And I wanted to share some information today about what it means to be on the board, how you get involved, what the time commitment is, and you know potential rewards you get out of this board service. And as you may have seen, we did put out a call for board members. We're looking for two more board members to serve with us. And that closes, I believe, on July 6th. Um, I'm going to give you some more information toward the end, but if you're interested in applying, when this video goes up, there's going to be links to the process of application process. And if you have further questions that I don't get to here, you can reach out to info at PilatesMethodAlliance.org. Just checking to see who all is here. Um, so we've had lots of questions about what it means to serve on the board. And I'm here to focus on those questions for you. And I want to respect your time. And I'm gonna answer as many questions as I can as I go along and present a little bit first. So like I said, it's my first experience with Instagram Live. Bear with me while I navigate settings and questions. Um, so who am I? Katie Santos, I'm a Pilates teacher and I'm a studio owner. And like some of you still, I'm closed down. But I'm also a PMA board member, and we've spent some time over the last few months really working to support our community and try to give you as much, many resources as possible while we're going through this crazy time. So I came to the PMA because I really believe in the importance of the Pilates method for clients, and I felt it was really important for the public to understand what it meant to be like a comprehensively and well-trained Pilates teacher. So in my years in the Pilates world, I've seen a number of times where we've had to explain to clients, what is the difference between a teacher who took a weekend certification and someone who has spent the years long process that it takes to be a really comprehensively trained teacher. And I found it frustrating to try to express the clients how a comprehensively trained teacher could look at them, assess their movement, assess their goals, and really work alongside them to better their client's health. And I knew that the Pilates method, as the Pilates Method Alliance supports it, was going to be the answer to help the public understand that difference. And in our studio, we have teachers that work really hard and spend lots of time and money on their education. And I wanted to make sure that they had a good robust place to come and continue that education and to gather with their fellow practitioners at our conference. So I came to the Pilates method from a segment of the fitness world, which will remain unnamed for now, that was focused really primarily on aesthetics. And it was attention building competitive kind of backstabbing place to be. And when I found Pilates, I realized that the Pilates method and the people I knew 
that were involved in it, that kind of competitiveness and, I don't know, body shaming, for lack of a better word, wasn't really present so much as it was in this other areas of fitness. So I knew I had found my home. And for some of you, like I've heard from, like me, Pilates literally probably saved my life. And for that, I really wanted to give back. And each one of us teachers, we have a guiding reason, a mission of why we continue to learn to teach Pilates. And for me, I have a son of military age. Actually, it's a little older now. He didn't go and serve and he didn't come home with a catastrophic injury. And when Elizabeth Larkham and her fellow teachers got involved in and kind of birthed the Heroes in Motion program, I knew that the Pilates that we taught at our studio had the capability to help improve the lives of not only soldiers returning from war, but others who were catastrophically injured. And I really wanted to be involved in Heroes in Motion, and I felt that a board position would be the best way to support that initiative. And like I said, I also wanted to just grow the Pilates method overall, um, awareness to the public and the medical field and, and practitioners that didn't understand the value of Pilates. So what does Pilates Method Alliance look like? It's a nonprofit first and foremost, and it's separated into two components, the membership organization for which the board is that I serve on works for, and then the National Pilates Certifying Program. So even though we've got this umbrella PMA name, those are two distinct and individual components. The board, like I said, is responsible to the membership organization. And it's made up of the staff and the board of directors. And this staff in Miami that is very talented and very dedicated and long serving works really hard on the day-to-day -day operations of the organization itself. The board's responsibility is more high level strategic planning and kind of overseeing and guiding. So for instance, let's say a website needed to be redone. In that case, the staff would be involved with going out to vendors and soliciting um, proposals from those vendors based on what the staff knew that they needed. The staff then would take those proposals to the board and present the options that they thought were best. And then it's the board's job to question and help the staff decide which one is the most viable for the organization. So that's just an example. So in other words, the staff knows the inner workings of what goes on and the board helps to kind of guide this high level strategy. And you can find lots more about how that works if you go to PilatesMethodAlliance.org. You look under the About tab and then search for Governance. And in there is more information about the board service, how the, how the organization is governed. The bylaws are in there as well. So serving on the board, not compensated in a monetary way. And frankly, I had to meet with my business partners when I first wanted to take this on to make sure that they were okay with the time commitment that I knew I was gonna have. And we all agreed that paying it forward and the chance to give time to the industry was really worth it for us. And the board is made up of primarily Pilates teachers and studio owners or other aligned individuals. And we're not executives but some of us do have more advanced degrees. But the experience that we bring to the table comes from knowledge of the industry, the education and the experience that we've gained over our lives and over our time in the industry. So each one of us has ideas that we think will help foster the industry forward. And the board members have lots of differing needs, um, or members have lots of differing needs, I mean. And we as a board try to work hard to find the middle ground of what will serve the most people. Each of us board members are expected that we are listened to and that we have our opinions respected and that any potential conflicts that are surfaced 
are really work to resolve collaboratively. We allow for debate and challenge of ideas, but we keep our disagreements unheeded. And when the boards make decisions, oftentimes tasks are assigned to one or more board members, and there's an expectation that we will fulfill those tasks that we commit to. Each board member is asked to share in the workload that the board takes on. And to be honest, there's times when it's smooth sailing and all the tasks get done and everything gets accomplished. And there's times when what we wanna have happen doesn't necessarily happen. There's maybe more important things on the docket that need to be looked at than the idea that one of us is bringing forward. And there are times when not all members agree, but we're committed in the end to speak with just one voice. So each of us on this board really truly wants to do our best. And sometimes that comes with struggle and sometimes it comes with lots of time. But I will say that each of us believes that the value of the Pilates work is important and each of us wants to do what we can to share that work with the world. So let's talk a little bit more about that time commitment. We meet together as a board via Zoom, um, even before COVID, 90 minutes every month. And every few months that commitment is up to a potentially two hours when we have to divide or dive into a little bit more of the organizational tasks. And once a year, we meet in person at conference for a full day ahead of the conference. And then the remainder of our time at that conference is spent really interacting with the attendees, talking to members, talking to our sponsors and other stakeholders, and talking to presenters and getting in our own CECs when we can. Oftentimes, well, I won't say oftentimes, but sometimes, the time commitment does go up when there's more urgent needs. In reality, the last few months, it's gone up a lot to help with member challenges, to work on streamlining the organization to save money, and to help create content that we hope will f help the community move through the situations that we're going through now. So that's a time commitment that you need to be aware of. So what does the board actually do? One of my staff members asked me. So I said, that's a really good question. So being on the board again is about service. And in times like now, it's really about listening to others and bringing our best to the table. Sometimes it's about change. Sometimes it's about really big change. Sometimes it's about small little tweaks that help the organization and its members run better. And when changes are needed, we have as a board to really step up our game and start to really listen to what the membership needs. We have various duties that just go along with the course of our yearly service. And one of the major ones is working with the staff to help produce the conference. Now the staff is super talented and dedicated to the logistics of actually putting the conference out. What our job is at the board is to look at programming and help guide that programming by looking at the applications that come in, looking at session feedback from past years, looking at the registration levels in different areas, and listening to the needs that we hear during the year from attendees and members about what they want to see for educational conference or educational content at the conference. We spend time reviewing the financials of the organization and doing budgeting to make sure that membership dues are spent really wisely. And we work to apply those funds where it will do the most good for the most members. We bring forward our, our ideas about what we think might be good benefits for our members. Um, and this is a case where the staff then looks at those benefits and the practicality and helps us decide what are viable and important be benefits that we can bring forward to our members that make sense to them. We also work on initiatives that we and our members are passionate about. Pilates for Youth, which I think is a really vitally important initiative right now with kids being at home and educated from home and maybe not moving as much. 
Heroes in Motion, which is my passion, Pilates Day, which lots of people get involved with. We also help to create and review our long range plan and make sure that it reflects the needs of the most stakeholders. Those are our vendors, our members, our teachers, our sponsors. We help to support the Pilates School Approval Program and promote its adoption. And the board actually creates a lot of the content and the offerings that you see, such as the blog posts, the webinars, events like this one right here. For me, one of the things that I'm most proud of is getting the app out to our conference attendees a few years back. So attendees can, it's easier for attendees to see the venue, to change their sessions when they want to, to connect with their friends. And it's easier then for us to attract or to um, take a look at the effectiveness as, of our programming in real time. The other is my involvement with the Heroes in Motion initiative. And right now, to be honest with you, I am a party of one on that initiative. So if anyone's interested in jumping in either into a board position or a committee position to help with that, I'm listening. Honestly, being on the board has really taught me so much. I've learned a lot from my fellow board members about how to conduct myself in a, in a board environment. I've learned from industry leaders more about the Pilates method. And I've learned from members about what they need. I'm more of the person that I am today because of that board service I've done. So now the question is, if you're interested, how do you get started? So if you're interested in serving, it is a commitment, but it's a really rewarding way to contribute your voice to furthering our industry. How do you apply? So the deadline to nominate yourself or someone else is July 6th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. You must be a current Pilates Method Alliance member, so you can join now if you haven't already. You do not need to be... Um, and CPT certified, so you don't need to be a, a certified Pilates teacher. And the board members positions we're looking for, we're looking for two positions, and you serve between four and six years. So if you're interested in this, please do email info at PilatesMethodAlliance.org and Molly will answer you. She's really great and responsive. And with that, I'm going to see if I can find some questions in here. So like I said, bear with me. And I've got a couple. But ask away. Why don't you, has anybody got questions out there I can, I can listen to? I don't have any. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope um, you're safe and sound. And I hope that you're doing the best you can and keeping your chin up. This has been a longer shutdown, I think, than any of us predicted, although a couple of us had that thought in mind, I think. But I really appreciate your time being here today, and I hope you take good care of yourself. Please don't be afraid to reach out to info at PilatesMethodAlliance.org, and I thank you very much for your time and attention. Take care, everybody. Music